In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the new virtual mic feature that was added in Ecamm Live version 3.10. So uh, if you have been using the virtual camera, the idea behind this might seem uh, quite obvious, really. <laughs> the virtual camera feature that we've got in Ecamm Live takes all of the visual output from Ecamm, so basically just exactly what you're seeing of me now, uh, and then it presents that to the computer as if it was a camera source. So then in other applications like, for example, Zoom or Microsoft Teams or Google Meet or whatever, whatever it is that you're using, um, you can then select that as your camera source. And that means that all of the Ecamm Live visual goodness goes into those applications. And so you can do great looking presentations and things like that using the full Ecamm Live production capabilities to feed into those other applications. But until now, the audio wasn't actually making it from Ecamm. So you would either be just having all of the Ecamm visuals going in, uh, but then just using your regular mic going directly into those applications, or you would use a program like loopback to sort of do some slightly more advanced routing of audio from Ecamm into those applications. And I know it's something that a lot of people found confusing. There was often questions about this in the Ecamm uh, Facebook group of exactly how to uh, use loopback and all these sorts of things. And if, if people even needed it, certainly I've got a video on my channel, which is do I need loopback? And uh, now certainly that one is a little bit out of date. And the answer is probably for most people, no, because the virtual mic will do it for you. So basically the virtual mic does for audio what the virtual camera does for uh, video. So that basically means that all of the audio from Ecamm Live, including your microphone going into it, but then also any sound effects, any background music, any things like that, um, that is all then gonna feed out of your uh, Ecamm to this virtual mic that can then be used in any other application. So I think it's easier if I just show you this, isn't it? So <laughs> let me come into my uh, demo mode. And so here I am, I've got my just my Ecamm window open. Uh, and if I go to output, here is where we can see our virtual camera. And uh, this one is on. Uh, and now we've got virtual mic just beneath it. Now, if it is the first time you have uh, installed version 3.10 and you haven't activated this, um, then you will see a thing that says install virtual mic. So you just need to click on that and then it'll prompt you to enter your uh, password, your Mac password, and uh, it will just do couple of seconds to install it and then you're ready to go and then just make sure that it is toggled on. Incidentally, with these things in here, so we've got virtual mic, virtual camera, uh, audio monitor out, video monitor out, the sharing window and so on, uh, you do get this little notification just up here uh, in the sort of top left of the uh, main window, the main Ecamm window. Uh, and so this is telling me that my virtual monitor is on, this one is my sharing window, my virtual camera, and my uh, virtual mic. So these that's what these little symbols are here. They just indicate which of those is on or not. Uh, once you have got it on though, uh, then you can go into whatever application it is you want to use it in. So uh, let's talk about Zoom, shall we? <laughs> One of my favorites. Uh, and I'll come over to uh, Zoom now. And so this is in the Zoom settings. Uh, and just as before, where we went into the video, uh, and in video settings, we could uh, select the camera and we're basically just selecting the virtual camera. Uh, and as you can see, it's given a preview. That is basically a preview of what you're seeing now uh, just in there. So that's basically taking all of the Ecamm video stuff and uh, putting that into Zoom as a camera. There's a few little caveats around this and I've made uh, plenty of videos about this before about using Ecamm with Zoom So uh, for the virtual camera. So I won't go into all those now, but we'll go into the audio because that's what is the new feature. Well, now, just like we could select the virtual camera from Ecamm Live. Uh, now we can also select the Ecamm Live virtual mic. And you can see that as I'm speaking, this uh, little bar here is sort of bouncing up and down, showing me that it is hearing my voice. Uh, but also if I was to play a little piece of music out of Ecamm Live, you'll notice that it is also picking that up if I stop talking for a moment. So the fact that that little bar is jumping up and down tells me that Zoom is hearing that audio. And that's showing that it is picking up the virtual mic. And this is the thing that it just was not doing before. Um, you would have to use something like loopback. Now, there is still a potential use case for loopback because all we're doing here is we're taking the, the audio from Ecamm into Zoom. That is what the vast majority of people would ever need to do, uh, you know, certainly with uh, with loopback. So they've got some sort of production going on in Ecamm and they want to feed it into Zoom. Uh, there is still a use case for loopback though. And that is if you are in the rather niche uh, situation where you are, say you've got interviewees in Ecamm Live interview mode, and you also want them to be able to hear what's going on in the Zoom. So say you're gonna have like a panel discussion, you're feeding that into Zoom, 
And then you've got a number of uh, guests in Zoom that are going to be asking questions and you want those to be heard, for example, uh, by the panel. Then at the moment, the routing of the audio uh, from Zoom would not be coming back into uh, Ecamm in quite that uh, that way. So, uh, I mean, if you were just doing a webinar, for example, where it was just only one way, then the virtual mic would still work perfectly for that because you could have your Ecamm Live interview mode, have your guests coming on, uh, and then that would just be feeding into the webinar the one-way uh, uh, discussion, <laughs> if you like, of just speaking to your webinar attendees. So in that case, you still wouldn't need loopback. But that is just where you may still consider using loopback. Uh, but I've, again, I've got videos on loopback on my channel, so I won't go into all of those. Uh, there are a few audio settings that you may want to consider checking though now that we are taking our Ecamm Live settings into here. Before I tell you about that, I do just need to mention this thing that's just down below me actually, the Ecamm Live Masterclass. Uh, so this is a course that I've created to basically, it's, it's your online encyclopedia for all things Ecamm Live. You'll always know that the information here is up to date and there is 150 videos plus uh, more being added <laughs> as we speak. And uh, this is all everything from beginner to advanced level of Ecamm Live and all the different ways that you might use it. So for example, I do have a whole section there about using Ecamm Live with Zoom, with Teams, with Discord, things like that. But then also obviously for using it for live streaming and recording, which I also do and cover extensively. Uh, and really just all of the different features and they're all broken down into different sections. So we've got sections on specifically overlays, all the different kinds of overlays, working with scenes, different ways that you can work with scenes, all of these different things. Uh, and then what this means is because they are broken down individually section by section, it means that that as Ecamm Live is updated, these videos will be updated for those specific things. And if there is a new kind of overlay that is added in, <laughs> who knows, uh, then that new video will just slot into place as well. So it will be continually updated. I cover Stream Deck, obviously, how to use Stream Deck and Loop Deck with Ecamm Live, how to use Ecamm Live for presentations with uh, PowerPoint and uh, uh, Keynote and things like that. It's basically your, as I say, online resource for all things Ecamm Live. You also get $150 worth of bonuses with it as well. Uh, and the course itself is $147. So effectively, you're $3 up before you even start. <laughs> so head over to ecamlivemasterclass.com uh, and sign up there today. But I digress slightly. <laughs> Let's get back to Zoom. And I want to tell you about these audio settings that you can change in Zoom. Because if you are a, uh, certainly if you're a good Ecamm Live Masterclass student, uh, you'll know to uh, pay a little bit of attention to your audio. <laughs> and by a little bit of attention, I mean you will be really concentrating on getting good quality audio uh, when you're using Ecamm Live. And that also goes when you're feeding into Zoom as well through Ecamm Live. Now, Zoom is going to assume that you are one of the masses. You're not one of the, uh, you know, tiny few top percentile as you are <laughs> that is uh, concentrating on looking and sounding good on uh, in Ecamm and on Zoom as well. Um, and so it is assuming that you've got probably pretty uh, pretty bad audio quality. You know, maybe you are using the Max built-in microphone uh, and you've got an old Max so the fans are whirring up and maybe you're in a noisy coffee shop or something like that. So it is assuming the worst possible case and Zoom is going to be trying to fix all of these potential problems that you might not even have. <laughs> so down here, you've got a few settings that I want you to just draw your attention to. Uh, so the first one here is automatically adjust microphone volume. So that is something that if you are paying attention, you don't really want Zoom trying to be in control of your volume, especially if you are doing things like playing in audio, playing in sound effects, maybe you're playing uh, sort of movie clips or things like that. Uh, I'm sure that you are, you know, be being attentive to your levels and things like that. So that one probably is on by default. I would recommend turning it off again if you are paying attention to these things. Uh, you've got this one here, suppress background noise, and that is to try and filter out some of this background noise. I'm going to skip over this one for a moment because actually if we do this next thing, this one is actually irrelevant. So uh, this background noise suppression, the default is auto. You can leave it there if you want, uh, but I'm going to recommend that you come down and you toggle on this one here, music and professional audio. So it says show in meeting option to enable enable original sound. Now original sound is basically meaning it is just going to take whatever audio it gets and uh, this is you know assuming that uh, music and professional audio um, is uh, people who are like you, professional audio people who are spending a little bit of time and care and attention on their audio. So we want to enable this one because we do know what we're doing to a, a much greater extent than the majority of Zoom users. So we're going to do that one where it says uh, enable original sound and we've got a couple of other options here so once you enable that one you'll see this little pop-up 
comes down here or these extra options um, and the first one is high fidelity music mode now we might not be playing music you might not be uh, you know playing your guitar or piano in your zoom meetings however toggling this one on will just improve the overall audio quality um, and uh, take more of exactly what's being given to it um, there is a little caveat here and a little uh, little b box which is basically saying this is going to have a greater impact on your processor power and it's also going to have an impact on your uh, bandwidth usage as well. Uh, I'm going to assume that uh, if you are an Ecamm uh, folk <laughs> you've probably got yourself a reasonable setup and you've also potentially got a reasonably good bandwidth as well so it's something to just bear in mind but I think it, with modern bandwidths and uh, modern modern bandwidths modern internet speeds and uh, with modern uh, Macs and things like that this is perhaps not so much of an issue so I certainly leave this one on high fidelity music mode echo cancellation I leave that one off because uh, like all uh, good people <laughs> I wear headphones whenever I am on zoom calls uh, either in-ear monitors or over the ears or whatever it is and I recommend that you do the same and if you're doing that then uh, you do not need this uh, echo cancellation uh, the next one is stereo audio mode now obviously this is a mono mic, so there's no need for stereo, right? Uh, well, yes, except if you wanted to play music and things like that, maybe you're doing like, I don't know, a Zoom co-working session or something, uh, and you want the audio to go over in stereo, then you can enable that. But once again, you've got this caveat that it is, um, again, a, uh, a sort of potential, uh, going to lead to potential increase in bandwidth usage and all those sorts of things. So uh, that is just uh, another thing to bear in mind. But uh, I would certainly have my settings set like that. That is, in fact, how I have my settings. And that will just lead to a better quality audio for your participants. Um, so that is basically uh, all there is to say about the Ecamm virtual mic. I mean, actually, from the Ecamm point of view, it's pretty simple to set up, isn't it? It's just a case of toggling on and then select that as your audio source. This works as well in, uh, obviously, Teams, anywhere else that you want to use your uh, mic on your system. So uh, that is all for this video. But don't go anywhere because there is some more videos about some more great new Ecamm Live features coming up uh, right now. So I'll see you in those videos.